Today's goal is to get all the remaining parts on my car, everything I have for it. Wish me luck. Garage time. Okay, first up are the headlights. These rings have been painted to match the color of my car. I did these here in my garage probably a month or two ago. These are the standard US beam headlights. And these aren't my long-term choice, but this is what the budget has. So we're gonna put them on and roll with it until we decide to change. Also guys, stick around to the end of this video. There's gonna be a giveaway on today's video. Okay, like most things, I have extras and I need to take this black trim, the internal trim, off of these sugar scoops and add them to my yellow ones. There's one. It's like a dark green color, pretty cool. These are actually plastic. I thought they were metal, but they're, uh, they're plastic. These seem to be fitting really well. Before I, I bend those tabs over, I want to get them in the car and the gaskets, make sure everything is okay. This stuff called a quick glow is really good on chrome. Kind of see right there, that's the kind of before, kind of hazy, junky. And then after, this is where the, the logo is. Still has polish on it, but it wipes right off. Looks good. Yeah, not bad. I said this before when I was going through some of my wire harness stuff, these turn signal wires are okay. The headlight wires are not okay. This, this is the ground wire and it's, it's just overheated. It's, it's burned insulation. So it's not safe to connect the headlights, but I'm going to install them anyways. I'm going to have to rebuild the headlight harness. So a lot of this is sun damaged and kind of, kind of banged up. So I'm just holding the wires in place. All the fuses and wiring are not connected for the headlights. I'm not worried about these wires. This one, I had the factory connector. I'd like to replace that sometime with something a little bit less brittle. And then I couldn't find one for this one. And this one's actually the, the turn signal wire. So I'm gonna cover that with heat shrink. These are the grounds, I'll insulate them as well. Okay, let me go look for the gasket that goes on the paint there. This is another gasket from URO. I hope this is the right one. Headlight lens seal. So this might go here. Okay, I just confirmed this seal is for the H4s, which I hope to have someday. So I am missing the seal that goes around the perimeter here. So I'm gonna put this together lightly, perhaps with a little bit of tape And never mind all the fingerprints and stuff, but this trim actually fits pretty well without the gasket. Um, I have a little bit of tape here really to prevent it from chipping or scratching, but also to remind me that I need to get that gasket ordered. 
but from this side, it actually fits pretty nice. And this side too, it looks pretty good. Okay, now speaking of seals, this seal that goes kind of between the lens and the signal housing and the signal housing and the paint, I actually had some seals. I got them on eBay and my, I sent them back because my opinion was they were way too stiff and it put a lot of stress on the plastic and it caused it to kind of bulge a little bit. It's not screwed in yet, but I wanted to show you this little relief cut right here allowed me to go around the corner without making a dramatic cut. Our side is not sticky, so that means getting the lens on and off will be really easy if you ever have to replace a bulb or anything. Now that the housing is dangling from the car with the lens screwed in, I just want to show you that seal and it's pretty tight everywhere you go. I don't know if water would leak in this anyways. So you gotta remember, this is a homemade fender, an aftermarket turn signal, and an aftermarket lens. So it only, to me, makes sense to have to fiddle with this to make it fit, which is why I'm going with a homemade seal. Okay, who knows why I have so many of these things? Uh, these are all, I think, original ones. I'm just picking the best ones and polishing them up. Whatever I don't use, I sell them. So this has been my strategy all along. I'm using this same stuff, Quick Glow. It, uh, it really does wonders on this old chrome, especially if it's pitted. It, it, it almost takes the pits away. It's kind of, kind of amazing how well it works. You can kind of see some of the differences before and after. The fit is not bad, although what happens is this needs to kind of tilt up a little bit to make it flush with the hood. And that, you can see how it rocks a little bit. Um, that's where we need to get creative again and, and, and shim the bottom out. There's only two screws, so you can't really shim behind the screws and expect it to rotate. So this is where it needs to have something to stop it on the back. And then you don't want this to run into the chrome or to the paint. So it's gonna need a strip above to kind of buffer it between. If it's rattling around, you don't wanna chip or scratch the paint. Okay, I'm sure I'm gonna get some hate on this one too. I am going to create the space I need right here by adding JB Weld. JB Weld is like an epoxy and that's going to be I think the best way to space this out without really modifying any parts. It's really too much distance with foam and foam is just too variable. I mean, it might work for the next month or two, but I'm looking for something that's gonna remain in position for a long time. I'm putting way too much of this on because I know that we're gonna be filing it smooth. And the viscosity is just a little bit too light, so I'm having to constantly let it sag. Okay, the, the JB Weld on the back is dried and it's really shored up the position of the, the grill here. So I'm putting it on now for the final time. It's gonna go just about like that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put some putty between the body and the grill just to prevent any kind of vibration and protect the paint. This ridge line here is pretty vulnerable, so we just wanna protect that.
So this stuff is, is squeezed out a little bit. My dad was just here and he was checking out the car and he reminded me this was the very first video on this channel concerning the backdate parts to convert the short hood fender into the long hood that you see today. So it's kind of cool to see it in final paint. And now both sides are done. Pretty happy with it. See this tape right here is in place of the gasket, which I don't have. But the fit of these URO lenses to the car and the grills and all that really is a relief. You know, this was, like I said, all homemade from flat sheet, including the hood. So now it's time to go get the bumper. And there it is. Sorry, I think I forgot to hit record, but putting the bumper on was easy. It was all pre-fit with only like six bolts that hold it on. It's really a cover more than it is a bumper. There are a lot of rubber bits that go in the seams here. I'm not gonna put them on right this minute. I have some rubber spacers in there from when I trial fit this. If you remember, this is the bumper that I didn't section it, but I did heat it and bend it. This is kind of an unintentional uh, Magnus Walker look where you got multiple colors on the car. So you guys got to let me know what you think about the, the two-tone idea of a different color besides yellow for the bumpers. Right now we have this kind of pearl white or off-white color on the front and then on the back it's still in the primer. Yeah, I don't have the emblem that goes on these two holes, uh, but I do have the vent that goes right there on the cowl. And then these rubber plugs are just chilling out. The, I do not have the windshield wipers, or at least I don't think I do. I, I might have the motor, but no wiper arms. Hey, you guys will find this interesting. I now need a stick. I can't quite get my fingers in there, so I have to use a yardstick now to open the latch. That of course won't stay that way for long. I'm going to modify this latch and also a spring to help take pressure off the hood while it lifts up. So that'll get fixed later. Right now, I'm just trying to get parts on the car. That's another swap meet part. Uh, it says 20 bucks. I know I didn't pay 20 bucks. I probably paid 10 bucks. Um, this was from the Anaheim swap meet. Now the Porsche PET catalog says tapping screw, which is a sheet metal screw. So these seem to be the right ones. Just clearing out the holes. I thought you'd be able to see those shiny screws, which I think I'll eventually paint black, but these are really hidden by the hood. So that just makes it just look a little bit more finished. More to the black and yellow look. Yeah, I was gonna install my other side door handle. The uh, passenger side is already on. This is, is working, it's missing the tumbler, which is how I bought it. But I also realized that the stud on this side is broken off. And it's broken off really deep in there. That wasn't very nice. I, I thought it was a good handle. 
but I overlooked that when I bought it. I, I think it was a good deal either way. So I'm gonna fix this on a different episode, but for the sake of completeness, I'm going to put the gaskets on and put it on the car. Okay, these guys are matched left and right, but I can't tell. They used to be labeled on the back, but it got painted. This one looks like it's an L, so this should be the right side. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I can barely see the R on this one. So that should go on the far side. Let's see if we can get these installed. Also, the uh, URO makes these gaskets. Put these on now. A little white chalkiness on this one, so I'm going to silicone oil it real quick just to clean it up. This is now nice and black, although it's a little bit more slippery, so I need to get it in place and get the back on as soon as I can so it doesn't slip off. But it's looking good. There we go. This cover really does fit nice and flush, so happy with that. And next up is the mirror. And I like these mirrors. These are the Durant mirrors. This one is the small version. This is a 356 mirror. Let me show you the difference. I have a 911 mirror, um, and these are for earlier cars. Like this car, um, I guess if it's a 72, 73 or something would have the bigger flag mirror. I have one of those too, but I sort of like the older look. So I'm gonna go with the smaller one, which is the 356 version. The holes are placed in the right position. However, these holes are too small. They've probably gotten filled up with some, you know, primer and filler. So I need to drill out the holes a little bit. Okay. You may want to avert your eyes for the next part here. We drill holes in the side. That should do it. I will come back and put some paint on the inside of those holes just in the, in the event that I did cut into some bare metal. It seemed like it was mostly just primer and filler, but either way, I'm gonna paint it. Here's a look at that mirror on the side of the car. This is not an authentic mirror. So a lot of people are probably gonna to object to this. I'm gonna drive the car and see how functional this is. I mostly care about function and, you know, small size. I like the smaller size. It's not uncommon for a lot of race cars in the day to put what they called aero mirrors or even smaller mirrors to get out of the airflow. Okay, next up are these door frames. These parts are used. They've been sitting kind of in my storage spot for a while. So I'm gonna polish up the, the trim and uh, screw these on. Here's a bag of door hardware. Two bags, I'm assuming left and right. So let's see what we got. I didn't close the door all the way. You can see there's a nice space right there, but it gets really tight here at the top. 
really tight right here and I haven't closed the door all the way. So need to adjust the frame down into the door just to get a little more space here at the top. This is a good first pass. I got all the bolts in and they're tight. So the gap here is, is pretty even with the car. Comes up in the corner, still pretty even. Gets a little bit tighter at the top, like I said before, but it's not touching the paint and it probably needs a little bit more adjustment. You could see me hitting it with the hammer and dolly. I tried to take some of the curvature out of it because it's basically peaking here in the middle. And I'll probably still do a little bit more work on that one. That's something you got to sneak up on to see how the gap gets bigger in the back. And then it blends in with the rear window. Pretty even right there. Right there is pretty even. So I am going to leave that alone. Um, I do have to ad adjust the door latch because now the door is sticking out a little bit. But that's all part of the puzzle. There is a piece of trim that goes along here and I do not have that trim yet. So I'll be shopping for those uh, most likely used. And then there's also a trim on that rear quarter window too that goes underneath there. Kind of makes one continuous swoop as it goes into the quarter. Now inside the car, I'm just loading in some more of the gauges. It's the fuel tank gauge. Um, I'm not even sure that's the right one. These gauges all need to be rebuilt. This one's got a really cloudy face. And this one here, the glass is also cloudy, mostly on the inside. But I can read them. It's just that they have to be rebuilt in the future. No big deal. Right, same with the tachometer. It's really, really clouded. But it is the silver dot. Get this guy in there. Oh, so close. It's just a tiny bit too loose. Um, yeah, I'll just need to, you know, have a, a make a ring that's just going to center that and lock it in place. But I think that looks really good. My first time ever trying this dash. This is a racing dash from, I guess, a, a later model Carrera with the vents up here. But uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna use this. It really looks like it needs to go much further back. Or maybe that's the way the Carrera dash is. But this is an option. This was something I picked up for like 10 bucks at a swap meet. And my thought was either use it as is or potentially even cover it with a um, felt or something that would scatter the light. It's very black in here. You can see the yellow starts to shine through. It's my Momo steering wheel, leather horn button, patinaed gauges, and none of them are connected, but I'll probably connect one by one starting with the tachometer. And that's about it. I don't have many more parts for this. I mean, there's a few things here and there, but that's the bulk of this car, phase one. But before I wrap up this video, I'm gonna clean up the tires so I can get a nice shot of the side of the car. And also there's the giveaway. Okay, I wanna clean these wheels. These are the uh, cookie cutter wheels. Um, I actually like them too. They're a little too narrow for the rear. So I do have plans for bigger wheels on front and rear. And Super Clean is a friend of the channel and they have this wheel cleaner that we're gonna try out. They wanna give one of you a kit of Super Clean and some swag to celebrate completion of phase one. That's awesome. Okay, to win your uh, giveaway of Super Clean, um, I'd like to give it to someone who has watched a few of the shows, a few of uh, the, the videos on my channel. And it's also important that um, Super Clean will ship it to you, but only to a U.S. address. So even if you're international, if you have a U.S. address or a friend in the U.S., 
Um, that's the only thing that you have to do is uh, be, have a ship to uh, US address. And uh, in order to know who's kind of been paying attention, um, you've got to answer three questions. Um, number, number one question is, what year is this thing? Uh, I know it's a lot of different years. You're, you're seeing mirrors from early cars. You're seeing wheels from, I, I guess this is a, a 944. Uh, you're seeing backdated parts. But what year is the original chassis of this car? That's question number one. Question number two is name this color. And question number three is, what's the name of the kid that sometimes plays guitar on this channel? So in order to win, all you have to do is answer those three questions in the comment section below. If there's multiple people that get the answers right, which I'm sure there will be, you'll be entered into a lottery system. I will announce the winner on Wednesday, February 17th. I will announce the winner in the evening time and uh, I will get the address information and forward that over to SuperClean so you can get your stuff and you can clean your wheels too. They have great products. I've used it in the ultrasonic cleaner. I've I used it uh, on some of my engine parts and transaxle parts when it was time to get all the grime off that. And the stuff does work, otherwise it wouldn't be here. Also, I'm going to need to do something to get the paint off the tires. You can see right there, there's like a river of dirt just coming on down. Looking better already. Everything is still wet, but it's, I can tell you right now, it's a lot cleaner. There are some specks of primer on here, so it might, might need to just, like some of those specks will just come right off with a fingernail. A little bit of heavy overspray on there. And then the only part that looks bad on these wheels is right here, you can see how the factory clear coat or the factory anodizing is just getting really flaky right here. So these have never been polished. This is the factory finish. And it's just a little bit crazed, probably from the sun. And uh, that's, that's the finish. That's nothing to do with the cleaner. These wheels are old and really need a full restoration. But for the level of the car that we have now, this will suit me just fine. For the tire, I'm just gonna try some, some tire foam. And I have this brass brush, and I think it'll be okay on the rubber. So there it is, looking a little bit better. Uh, I wanna thank each and every one of you guys for sticking with me on this journey, but it's not anywhere close to being over. So phase one is just the beginning. Uh, I believe this is the base model Porsche. So if you were to buy a stripped out car, this is what you would pretty much get. You'd get the four cylinder engine, you would get the lesser wheels, you would get um, some missing pieces, for instance, like, tr like, cr like the, the trim on here, you, know, you don't get all the trim. Um, you get something that is a driver. And, and that's what this is. And it has a lot of features and adjustability built in the chassis. And, and that's by design because phase two is going to be not only a lot of uh, improving and testing and tuning, but it's gonna be an engine swap. A six cylinder engine's going in. Um, I'm looking for something three liters plus, and it'll probably be in the 200 to 230 horsepower range. Uh, which is a big step up. Right now we probably have about 95 or 90. And uh, we're also gonna be doing more to the suspension. We're gonna be doing more to decrease the weight and uh, just make sure everything works. Uh, there are some phase two items on this car already. For instance, the brakes. The brakes got accelerated into this build because I, I couldn't pass it up. The original plan and budget for this car was Boxster brakes, and those are affordable. So when I go through the cost in the next, I think it's probably two episodes from now, you will see some of the breakdowns on, on what phase two is versus phase one. Phase two is also the Rebel Racing suspension bushings in the front. That's not necessary for a base model car, but it is gonna enhance the performance, which is like a phase two item. Phase three is not 100% understood because I want to take this car on the track and get some, some, uh, some feelings with it. But phase three is going to put the power up over 300 horsepower using the same engine, but taking it apart, rebuilding it, and modifying it. 
So again, I want to thank you guys for being here on this journey. Phase one is really important to me. It's kind of the hardest phase probably, but uh, clearly it needs some more work. This car was pretty much thrown together in the last couple of week, uh, weeks, but it does drive and it will just continue to get better.